Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, we produce, record and edit video content, and audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Verbal, Podomatic, Anchor, Spotify and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and www.pitch-talk.com The pitch is where we eat, the pitch is where we sleep and the pitch is where we talk. Pitch Talk podcasts and videos are brought to you in association with LE Bikes. Begin your journey into electric bikes. Visit lebikes.co.uk Welcome to the Straight Shooting View. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Straight Shooting LJ and welcome to another episode of the Straight Shooting View. Now, I'd like to talk about Vinicius Junior and La Liga. And I'll start in the form of a question. Vinicius Junior, should he leave Real Madrid to beat the races? Now... This is somewhat of a contentious question, and it's not as cut and dry as people may think. Now think about this. You're 22 years old, nowhere near hitting your prime yet, and you're having serious success on a regular basis with the biggest club in the world, must be said, winning La Liga titles, Champions Leagues, and you're a main player in that. You're not a bit part. You're living in sunny Madrid, lovely weather, lovely food, sandy beaches, and you're getting paid a good wage from the club. Life is good if you're Vinicius Junior, yeah? Sounds good. Most people would give their right arm to be in this position at that age, any age. Well, maybe it's not that good because as a sacrifice for all of this, your mental health is potentially taking an absolute battering because as much as you try and tune it out, every monkey chop, every banana or missile thrown at the pitch at you, every verbal assault by a racist media and racist fan bases of clubs who are literally only doing it because you're doing your job of scoring and assisting goals on the football pitch. And not only do they hate you for that, They're using the colour of your skin to justify the hatred. And this is happening regularly, not once in a blue moon. Imagine being 22 years old and having to deal with this, plus your family or support system may not be around because you're plying your trade outside of your home nation of Brazil. So essentially, unless you've got a really good club, good friends or good teammates you're basically in a foreign land alone doing your job and doing it admirably well under those circumstances in a region of a country where racism is rife and also where you've got a scumbag of a fan who runs the league blaming you as well and even some fans doing the same yeah I'll tackle the latter of those first because as the latest racist abuse aimed at Vinicius Jr. has resulted in a partial stadium ban, a closure of of their south stand for five games and a paltry €45,000 or £39,000 ban for Valencia, fine, it's pennies and the stadium closure isn't even a complete one. And the club actually feel that the fine is totally disproportionate which is hilarious in and of itself. But if you went online after the abuse and saw some of the utterly moronic comments on Facebook pages such as Sport Bible and Give Me Sport, you'd think that Vinicius Jr. had sodomized someone's mother with a rusty fishing knife. Because some people were actually making excuses for and basically justifying the racist abuse, saying things like, ah, that's what you get for having a bad attitude and throwing yourself on the floor all the time. And I'm like, I, I just said to some of the people, like, I saw these comments and I thought to myself, no, you morons, 
Someone scoring goals against your team or diving, etc., is not justification for racially abusing them. Nothing that can be done on a football pitch justifies racist abuse being hurled at someone. And sadly for Vinicius, this is actually a regular occurrence. For full context, it must be noted that Vinicius was actually sent off during the match um, before reacting, but the RFEF, the Spanish Football Federation, said that he wouldn't be suspended for the next game, which as I record this was yesterday, and that he was only sent off by the referee at the time because the referee was, and I quote, deprived of a decisive part of the facts, adding that it was also impossible for him to assess properly what happened. Which sounds like a cheap cop-out to me, but at least the suspension won't stand. But the partial stadium closure to me is odd, considering the Spanish Football Federation said, as reflected by the referee in his minutes, there were racist shouts at Vinicius, altering the normal course of the match, and considering the infractions very serious. So, I'm not sure why they didn't pursue a full stadium ban. I get the referee, because as Bill Burr said, the referee only sees the retaliation. The match was paused actually in the second half, um, as an incensed Vinicius actually reported the opposition fans to the referee, and he threatened to leave the pitch in the second half at the Mestalla against Valencia after being subjected to alleged monkey charts. And Real, who, to their credit, said the incident constituted a hate crime filed a complaint with the Spanish State Attorney General's office and Spanish police actually um, detained three people in connection with the abuse directed at the Brazilian. So at least the Spanish police and Real Madrid have done something about it or at least attempted to. Now, as I've said before, nobody should be subjected to racist abuse and cast your minds back because Real, because remember, Jurgen Klopp was asked a moronic question by a Spanish reporter, which basically said, who basically said that Vinicius brings it upon himself, and Klopp was furious. And bear in mind, Vinicius plays for Real Madrid, not Liverpool, and this was before the sides were due to meet. I think it was before last season's Champions League final. And the Spanish reporter basically brings me on to the next part of the straight shoot review here which is about the media and the powers that be who basically in my view encourage this behavior by gaslighting Vinicius Jr or at least trying to by saying he brings it upon himself this rhetoric not only comes from some Spanish media outlets but even worse and moronically ironic it comes from an open out loud and proud Real Madrid fan who I've criticized on two separate straight shoot and view episodes based on his hypocrisy alone. The man who runs La Liga as its president, Javier Tebas. Now you'd think that Javier Tebas would jump to Vinicius defense as a Real Madrid fan. And he's remember, he's never kept that secret with his favorites, favoritism, but surprisingly, well, actually, unsurprisingly, really, because he's an idiot. He keeps repeating that Vinicius brings the racist abuse upon himself. And in response to Vinicius's recent comments, after he was sent off um, against Valencia for, re for basically reacting to the racist abuse by saying, oh, La Liga belongs to the racists, and in Brazil, Spain is, a no, is known as a country of racists. Tebas responded by saying Vinicius twice did not turn up to a meeting to discuss what it can do in cases of racism. And he did add, before you criticize and slander La Liga, you need to inform yourself properly. I think the other part of the quote was, don't be manipulated. And I'm thinking that anyone with half a brain would view that as a disgrace of a response. To say that Vinicius, who is the victim here, is committing slander by saying La Liga belongs to the racists and Spain is a country of racists, not every Spanish person, because he receives racist, on a, a racist abuse on a regular basis and it's abhorrent and once again shows that Javier Tebas is one of the lowest forms of scum, in my view, in a sport full of low people. Because as president of La, of La Liga, he's supposed to be setting an example. And he's not setting a good one at all. Again, 
And strangely, La Liga actually has said it will request more sanctioning powers so it can punish incidents of racism after the Spanish League's handling of the incident at Valencia received widespread condemnation from players. I mean, even players such as Michael Richards and even the Brazilian government were critical. But La Liga's comments made me think, what more sanctioning powers do you need? You are the league. You make and enforce the rules. Now, once again, cheap cop-outs and a lack of responsibility taken in regards to how they punish racism. To me, Javier Tebas, as it happens, um, has issued an apology the day before I recorded this, but bearing in mind that apology was issued on Wednesday and the incident happened on a Sunday, too little too late. Why did it take you so long? Clearly, the apology was to save face after trying to gaslight a victim of racist abuse who has been a victim of it regularly this season alone. If I were Vinicius, I'd personally tell Javier Tebas where he can stick his clearly forced apology. That didn't even sound like a proper apology either, especially when you consider the verbiage he used said, I think that the message and the intention I had was not understood by a significant number of people, especially in Brazil. He said that to ESPN Brazil. He continued to say, I did not want to attack Vinicius, but if most people understood it that way, I need to apologize. It was not my intention. I expressed myself badly at a bad time. There's no real apology in there. Only, ad only an admission that he needs to apologize, but he does everything but apologize. So you know what? As a man of color myself, Javier Tebas can do one. I mean, Real Madrid manager Carlo Ancelotti has called out the abuse as well. And he called the abuse, and to quote him, if a player is yelled at as a monkey and a coach has to think about removing him, there is something wrong in the league. The league has a problem with racism. Talking about La Liga, of course. With racism, the game must be stopped. If a stadium yells monkey, we have to stop the game. And even, you know what? Barcelona legend and current head coach Xavi also had some poignant words to say in relation to the situation as well. And the last part of what he said actually kind of struck a real chord um, with me, especially considering he's a Barcelona legend. But Xavi said... When acts of racism happen like it did with Vinicius, matches should be stopped. You have to stop all this and, and it's time to say enough is enough. It's the only, it is the only profession in which insults are accepted. I don't see any baker or teacher being insulted at work. All this has to be stopped. Try insulting a building worker, I'm sure a brick will fall on your head. Great analogy to be honest. He continues on to say, we have to get together and get tough. It's an educational issue. You don't have to go to a football stadium to insult. If I go to the theatre and I don't like to play, I leave. But I don't insult. And he continues on to say that we have to condemn that and educate people. We are in an environment where we are insulted and called names. It is very difficult not to bounce back. We don't have an educated environment in the world of football. That last bit started to strike a chord with me. But a journalist actually responded to Xavi. I'm sure the Madridistas will appreciate, applaud your support. And Xavi replied brilliantly. It is not about Madridismo. Vinicius is a human being before he is a Real Madrid player. And you have to support all players, no matter the race. And to me, you have to respect that. Also, the mention of an uneducated environment in football, that's actually a great point. Because, as I've said on so many occasions, football is a microcosm of society. Racist abuse should be rebuked, condemned, and people need education that it is not okay to say these kinds of things. Some may say, though, why doesn't Vinicius just move clubs or out of that country? But to that I say, why should he have to? 
Why should he have to leave a club and a manager who respects him, as Carlo Ancelotti clearly does, and he's always defended him, why should he have to give up doing what he loves, where he wants to ply his trade with the biggest club in the world because of cretins who seem to feel it's okay to racially abuse someone for what they do on a football pitch? Let that question marinate. If you think he brings it upon himself to me, you need to get a clue because you are as much a part of the problem as Mr. Tabas and some sections of those Spanish media. La Liga needs to look itself in the mirror. And I'm not saying this from a high horse position because I support a Premier League club. Because our Premier League has its own issues with the same thing. As shown by the taking the knee issues. But the fact that La Liga is hurting their own image by having this happen constantly and to me the way to stop it is if the black players just down tools and walk off the pits basically do a work stoppage unless this racism stops we don't leave or don't play and la liga uefa and fifa need to support this not punish or gaslight like they've done in the past with examples such as Danny Alves in La Liga's case where he ate a banana or a fan threw it in. And Mario Balotelli in UEFA's case when he said before Euro 2012 he'd walk off if he was racially abused and UEFA threatened him. Football needs to do better. And so does society because football is a microcosm of society. And a player shouldn't be forced to give up what he loves or even consider it because of a few absolutely vile cretins. I said, he shouldn't have to give up what he loves because of some cretins who feel it's appropriate to racially abuse someone who scores against you or who wins a penalty against you or whatever the case. No. But you know what? Should Vinicius Jr. leave Real Madrid and La Liga to get away from the racists? Will it make an impact if he does? Do La Liga, do Spanish football, do FIFA, UEFA, even our Premier League need to do better when it comes to racism and protecting players who are racially abused, not making them look like the aggressors when they're the victims. I think football needs to do better. Society needs to do better as well. And it's sad that it, this is still a topic of conversation in 2023. Sad. But I want to know your views. www.pitch-talk.com is the official website. You can catch our podcast there as well. You can grab our RSS feed there too. Wherever you pick up your podcast is where you can pick up our podcast. I said you can grab our RSS feed at www.pitch-talk.com. You can import that into whatever podcast player that you use. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Anchor, aka Spotify for podcasters. So many different places where you can catch the Pitch Talk podcast. Amazon Music, Verbal, Ghana, G W A N A. So many places. YouTube.com forward slash Pitch Talk is where you can find our videos, including video versions of the Straight Suit and View, Coaching with JBK, and much, much more. Also, 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 Facebook.com forward slash Pitch Talk. Become a fan, become a friend, become a member of the group. Join the footballing revolution we are working so hard to create. At Pitch Talk on Twitter. Tweet with us, follow us, see what we're up to. At Pitch Talk on Instagram for vlog previews, pictures, and much, much more. At Pitch Talk, we are on Reddit. We're also on TikTok as well. Search Pitch Talk on Reddit and on TikTok. So many places we're in, man. So many places where you can connect with us. Facebook, Twitter, among others as well. Instagram, TikTok, so many places. You know what? I have been straight shooting LJA. And until next time, take care, peeps. And thanks for joining me on the Straight Shooting View. Bye-bye. Join the Pitch Talk revolution. Check out the official Pitch Talk website. www.pitch-talk.com 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, we produce, record and edit video content and audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Verbal, Podomatic, Anchor, Spotify and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and www.pitch-talk.com The pitch is where we eat, the pitch is where we sleep and the pitch is where we talk. I can see you now.